this exhibit was several years in the making and it's um, actually a continuation of two other exhibitions and that there's been this series of contemporary beadwork exhibitions, the first one with Lisa Meyer at the Textile Museum in Toronto, which then was accompanied by a symposium and that model generated so much excitement um, that it was, you know, there was a subsequent one in Winnipeg and then we decided to sort of ramp up the exhibition. We have a lot of work that is commemorative and about healing and really serious issues, but at the same time, beaters have, you know, like all First Nations, Métis and Inuit people, awesome senses of humor. And so we've got SpongeBob, we've got, you know, little minion, Hulk minions, we've got beadwork on toilet paper. Like, and so we're hoping, you know, that people see this as really just, even though we have 48 artists and over 100 artworks, this is literally just the tip of the iceberg of what's out there. You'll notice on some of the uh, extended labels that a couple of the artists have wanted people to know this many tens of thousands of beads, this many thousands of hours of labor. We had a lovely couple uh, who actually came up at the opening and asked me if, you know, sometimes the beads are glued and because just the mass surface, I'm like, nope. Sometimes the beads are, you know, attached to each other by an individual stitch, one bead, one stitch behind me, one bead, one stitch at a time. Stitching can be a radical act, and reclaiming beadwork and bringing it forward has been a really radical act of survival. But also, it's a radical political act in some respects, because a lot of Canadians in particular are not aware of the degree to which our cultures and our practices were actually outlawed. For bead artists and artists in general, we want to inspire them. We want people to walk out and just like, okay, got to get the beads out, want to thread that needle. And for the, our larger audience, we're hoping that they walk out with a sense of awe and respect.